If you're looking for a delicious fall recipe, look no further. Official Mass Appeal chef Greg Monette is here to show us how to make butternut squash and blue cheese gnocchi off the menu at Chandler's Restaurant. Great to have you here, Greg. Good Thank you. you. As Thanks, always. Ashley. So, did she pronounce that right? Is it gnocchi? Gnocchi. Gnocchi. I guess the more gnocchi, the better. Gnocchi. <laughs> yeah. You guys know my Italian's horrible. So. <laughs> no, so it's fine. Really so it's fine. I try. Uh -huh. Yeah, trying is the most fun part, though. So, how do we make this concoction? Well, gnocchi, it's it's it really is like a uh, just a traditional uh, dish. Um, I would say in the northern regions of uh, of Italy, um, it's potato. Uh, again, you know, this goes back to like where people made the most of what they had at any given time. And so you, you're dealing with the simplest ingredients, potato, egg, uh, flour, and uh, basically kind of basically making a dumpling. Uh, and that's really all it is. But it and tastes so good. They yeah. do. They do. And especially if you add, <laughs> add a little something to it. Today, we're adding the sharpness of the, uh, um, of the blue cheese, kind of the sweetness of the butternut squash too. It'll add a little bit of color to it. and uh, and. And, really, and then we're gonna make a dish afterwards, uh, just kind of a, a take on a pasta dish, but just using gnocchi. And uh, I think you guys will really enjoy it. So it's like a pasta that you can get, but you can kind of infuse your own taste into it, make it a whole lot tastier than just box pasta. Exactly. All right, well, which, how do we? Which you can do with homemade pasta too, so. Mm -hmm. All right. But this is just another version of homemade pasta, but we're gonna prepare so, it a little bit differently. So we split up some potatoes? So did you bake these, of, or did you put did. it We did, these are a couple of okay. Idaho russet potatoes, just baked potatoes, they're yep. still warm. You're gonna break mm. it in half, mm -hmm. and we're gonna pop it into the ricer here. Without skin? Yep, without the skin. All right. That My potato good. too. I already broke it. No, I'll, I'll potato. Oh, good. <laughs> we're gonna make a big batch here. Here, guys. I'm gonna leave it to you to make sure the skin it's doesn't get in there. Oh, Seth, you failed already. Go. Oh no. Good thing I'm here to catch it. Well, this thing is. Uh, <laughs> this thing's. It's a. It's a <laughs> potato it's ricer a or a food mill. Uh, it's pretty idiot proof. So if you do put the skins in there. <laughs> It'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. That's good for me. It won't, it won't run them through. What if you don't have one of these fancy contraptions? If you don't, you can still do the same thing we're doing here. Uh, then you can just mash, not mash it, but uh, kind of break it apart with a fork so that it's nice and flaky. Okay. Um, and still, you know, but do it quickly so it still remains warm. Warm, of course, I'll right. Oh, thanks, Rick. Ashley, if oh, you want to just start cranking the I was just going to say, there. can I start cranking this up? Yep. Because, uh, Clockwise. Clockwise, right? Yep. That, you're going the right way, Ashley. No, yeah, I'm, I'm on a roll here. Oh, just like, is that okay? That's perfect. That's good? That's perfect. Okay. I'm gonna have to get myself one of these. So now, is it gonna drop down to the bottom, Greg? It does. It does, right through the little holes. So I'll hold, oh, I'll hold this look up. Look at that. Yeah. Hey. So it really just makes a smooth pasta like Hey, you could make hash browns with this, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're probably good. I'm thinking of all the things I could do with one of these. Now I'll ask, stop for a second. Santa I'm gonna Claus, go this is what I like, want. Drop these in there. Just grab the <laughs> Okay, continue. There you go. Okay. It's important nice. to wash your hands before you get started with a project like this, which we did. <laughs> Very nice. All okay. Right, so we print you wanna look inside, you got everything through there. Basically, yeah. For the most part. For the most part. Like Seth did. We got some fringe down, down here. Yeah. A little bit. We're all friends, you gotta have some fun with us. Oh, Greg's all good at right. that. Good. Look at that. So we have the um, kind of emulsified potato. So what's next? Exactly. So this is about this. We cut this recipe down a little bit from the one that I posted online, but uh, this is approximately like pound, pound and a half of potatoes, and then we put in like another. What we're using is the butternut squash. So I just roasted this, mashed it a little bit. We're gonna throw that on top of the potatoes. Okay. And then the next process is really just to mm. kind of keep everything kind of neat and clean and we're using flour and it's about two cups of flour for what we're doing but we're okay. gonna we're gonna kind of eye it actually oh. just to see what we need all right did you um put any seasonings on that butter no. squash well a little bit of salt and pepper okay that's about it all right so right now what we're gonna do is you want to just start you want to get your hands dirty? Yeah, oh, I do. Let right. me take nuts. off my rings, though. <laughs> it's important. I'm going in. Yeah, I don't want to eat Start rings. tossing it all together without squishing it together yet. Oh, Just gosh. Just make sure we coat. Toss it, but don't squish. Coat everything with the flour. A all light, right. fluffy yep. A light this. fluff. I love uh, when I hang out with Greg in the kitchen. I learn so much. Mm -hmm. there go. We're going to season a little bit, too, along the way. A little okay. Salt and Throw that in there. Well, bam. Seth, you can start pulling some uh, rosemary leaves off of here. And a okay. A fresh thyme. Hey, I, I, does Wait, this do strategy I work to go the opposite way? It does. Okay. There Just you making go. sure because sometimes, you nice know. Nice job. Do I start mushing this together once now? Once you do that. Uh, no, not yet. No. Oh, geez. Okay. Actually, How am I doing? Is this throw okay? Throw the egg in there. Okay. Here you go, Ash. Oh. Ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm throw ready. Throw the egg and the blue cheese in there. Okay. Now just still keep Ooh, tossing it all keep together? Keep tossing it together. What now, you, want it, you want it to do is, is kind of have all the colors come together and, uh, and be a little bit dry. 
So if you need a little more flour, you can pour a little bit more flour in there. And see how once that's done with this, mm -hmm. we can quickly chop that up. Okay. Now do you want me to, do you want me to, um... <laughs> the knife I used to have. <laughs> well, we'll find one. Or now, we can just shred these. Do you want me to take, do all of it? Yep, just a little, well, that's plenty. Okay. That's plenty. Hey, Greg, what do you say? More flour or no? Ooh. I'd say... It's a little bit moist, I would say. A little bit moist. Start working it together. Start squeezing it together into a ball. Oh, this is the best part. Oh, that looks really now, good. Now, what I'm doing is I'm bruising some of the leaves here. And, and so that brings out some of the taste? Brings out the oils, and which does bring out the This flavor. is rosemary you're adding now? Rosemary and fresh thyme. Oh, my so goodness. So the blue cheese, the flour. Are you bruising it, Seth? I'm bruising it very well. The baked potato, the butternut squash, some fresh herbs. Uh, a little bit of salt and pepper and an egg to kind of hold it together. All right. Oh, yes. So now we put the, we make these into little balls once we've blended everything in? Well, no, because we want to, we'll probably do it separate into two balls. Oh, large makes balls. It's a little easier to work, work with. Oh, okay. And then we'll roll it out into a dowel. And at that point, that's when we start cutting it. We drop oh, it in the water. and that's, and, and they turn into that. Yeah, exactly. All right. So we, we, I'm we, working we, it. I'm working it. What do you think? Maybe we should let the off, professional actually. take over. Okay. Well, that was fun while it lasted. Thank you for. Actually, you're right. You're right about there. Oh, see. I'm We're just mildly Look at these hands. <laughs> Didn't get messy for nothing. No, no, they did not. <laughs> feel free to go wash up if you'd like. Uh, I think it's kind of cool. All right. I feel why like I'm. Keep working yeah, with that see, a little bit. I knew there was a reason why. It. Sprinkle a little more flour, <laughs> and then just follow what I do here for a second. All right. I'm just gonna watch from afar. And all I'm gonna do is. Kind of work it together so everything's combined. All mm -hmm. right. And then we're just going to start rolling it out like a dowel. All right. And you can even you can even break those two pieces in half. You want about like a three quarter inch to get gnocchi about that size. Oh, I think I missed a step. How am I doing this? <laughs> roll it out, break it's it like in half. Roll but it's it incredibly yeah, delicious. Break it in half into two separate pieces. Uh, we're in business. We're in business. I'm your sous chef. It's something right? that seems so, like it's relatively easy to make at home if you have all the ingredients. Exactly. Exactly. It is, and you know, the technique is, is actually very simple. Mm -hmm. uh, while you're rolling it out, you're, you're trying to uh, spread it out a little bit with your fingers without breaking it apart. You know, this is one of those things, though, I'd rather go, because it seems like it's easy, I'd mess it up. I'd rather go to a place like Chandler's and get some for myself. There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I know. So there are a couple. I'd rather just eat it. Yeah, just go out to eat. <laughs> Leave it to the professionals. It's easier. They don't have to do the dishes either, which is <laughs> right. Nice. Right. Now the traditional technique on cutting this is is usually with a fork, mm -hmm. and uh, and then what happens is they'll roll it off the fork, so that it actually starts to get like a little That's indentation how it gets on it. That's that. Oh, I, oh, I, I love that part. The little. But I am I'm horrible at it. So <laughs> what I like to do is just make kind of little rustic gnocchi. Yeah, and, and no really, matter what, they taste good. They just break apart. All right. One thing we didn't do is we didn't overwork the dough. We just kind of brought it all together so it stays nice and uh, kind of fluffy so they're not dense, you know, little nuggets and stuff once you cook them. Right. And so the next step is we're going to put them in the water. Now, roughly how long do they go in the water for? Uh, till they float, which is approximately oh. a minute and a half, two minutes maybe. Well, why don't we take a quick break here? Sauce. If you don't mind sticking around for a little bit, that would be great. And then we can finish up this recipe later in the show. Yep. All right, so do not go anywhere because Greg's going to be back in a little bit to finish up this recipe. And Ashley might just wash her hands off. <laughs> I might. <laughs> Back in the kitchen with official Massacre chef Greg Monette to finish his recipe for butternut squash and blue cheese gnocchi. And it is smelling good in here, Greg. And it looks yep. good. Now these are, you know, our quick little batch. And uh, they cooked in about two minutes or so, started floating. That's quick, huh? And that's when you know they're done when they're floating. Right. What you would do is throw them in uh, some ice water until you uh, want to use them for a recipe. Do you think the reason that it only takes a few minutes for them to cook is because it's fresh? Because normally if you have box pasta, it takes 10, 12, 15 minutes well, to it's, cook. It's dry. Um, so, exactly. This is fresh. All you're doing really is kind of cooking the egg inside to hold everything together. Oh, and okay. That's really the only thing you have to worry about, too, because, uh, well, because it's a fresh egg. Exactly. You know? But I did, I made a batch earlier. They look good. Exact same ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, what I want to do now is just kind of put together a quick little pasta dish with some of my favorite ingredients. Uh, oh, one mine too. Pancetta. So we're going to use a little bit of olive oil. And pancetta is like an Italian bacon, right? It is. It is. And now what else do you have in there? I see some white stuff. Uh, shallots. Shallots. Yep. So with this, while I'm sauteing this, actually, you can just kind of slice those cherry tomatoes. I would love to. Grape tomatoes in half. 
uh, half lengthwise? Any way you want. Does it matter? Does it really matter? Uh, it does. It totally matters. I got to do this right. So, so hard to go home. What's what's new at Chandler's these days? Not yet. Oh. Not yet. <laughs> Sorry, not yet. I'm the one making this. Oh, Wine Wednesday. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and so what we're doing is, you know, we put together some special appetizers uh, uh, every Wednesday. Uh, we actually do it every every night. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this will be one coming up for the for the season, mainly because it's cold out, and this is just a nice hearty little dish. Yeah. Um, but we like people to uh, to order two appetizers or two entrees, uh, and then. What we do is incorporate a bottle of wine in, in that. And, uh, and so in the end, you're basically paying for uh, the half price of a bottle of uh, select wines that we choose every week. And you can learn a lot about the wines and the pairings with the foods. That's and smart, because I never get a bottle of wine when I go out, because it seems expensive to me, and I don't know what I'm talking about. But if someone, if you match it well and it's pretty affordable, I'm more, more inclined to do it. Yeah, well, a lot of people think, uh, you know, nice wines are, or just what the wine experience is inaccessible. Mm -hmm. um, at Chandler's, we try to, you know, alleviate any any anxiety associated with uh, experimenting with new wines. Um, you don't have to know anything about wine walking in there, <laughs> and uh, and our staff is very well trained. Um, they can recommend they've, you know, hundreds of recommendations, of course, off of our wine list. Uh, but if people have come in and uh, tried, you know, tried a new wine and they want to know where to find it, we can provide that information too. And, and really just kind of give them like a quick crash course on a lot of different wines throughout the course of their meal. Nice. Yes, you it's know? nice to know that kind of stuff. I, I just know white, red, I'd like to know exactly. what want, right? Sometimes a blush, which is in the middle, a blush. I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so what we started with was the pancetta and the shallots. Uh, start to render some of the fat from the pancetta. Mm -hmm. That's going to coat some of the gnocchi. Ooh. Brown it a little bit. Those look so Smells good. Great. Now, also, Greg, Thanksgiving is coming up, and you can enjoy Thanksgiving dinner at Chandler's. We do. We, we offer a, a beautiful uh, turkey dinner, of course, Thanksgiving. Uh, also baked ham. Uh, but then also our full dinner on uh, dinner entrees and appetizers, salads, uh, soups. We usually prepare a lobster bisque for that evening as well, and make reservations anytime you want. Not too early, of course. Yep. It's uh, just about less than three weeks away now, it right? It is. It is. We really we gear up for it uh, a couple days ahead of time, and uh, it's just it's crazy. But uh, once <laughs> once the day comes, but it's, it's delicious. It's a lot of fun. And that's <laughs> a great combination too. You know, heading the Yankee Candle for the day and experiencing kind of. The circus and the and the Disney World esque of it all, the Yankee Candle and eating out of Chandler. You, you get a break. Yeah, yeah you it's... get a you get a reprieve from all that when you walk into the restaurant. Exactly, it's, it's quiet, it's relaxed, it's really Definitely. nice. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to toss in some of the cherry tomatoes. Just last second. Yep, Seth, you can chop up some of that parsley all and right. basil I have there. Now this is not chiffonade. Remember, he always taught us the chiffonade word. Right. No. Chiffon rough, chiffonade. Rough and rustic is usually yeah, exactly. usually better for this type type of dish. And Ashley, if you want to shave some Parmesan, we'll finish the dish with that. Yeah, she'll do sure. a little switcheroo. Do I do, put that right on top here? Not, or not wait. Yet. Let's put it right on the cutting board, and we'll finish, oh, on the, cutting board. We'll finish okay. the dish with it. All right. I don't I know. Won't, I won't chop your fingers off, Ashley. Rough and rustic. I'm just going to go for it. <laughs> now, what I just did was add just a little bit of white wine mm -hmm. to start to give us a little bit of a sauce. Let that reduce a little bit. I'm just going to add a pat of butter. A little bit of butter. You guys have your herbs. Seth, I could take some herbs. In kind there. of. All right, here you go. Okay. We'll some some herbs. Oh, you got that? Uh, I'm having trouble with the shaving. <laughs> I see, I've try? never shaved my face before, and I feel like... It's in no way similar to shaving It's in no way similar right. to shaving. Right. Okay. Well, see, that's, that's good. It was well, slow. Well, bam. How was nice, that? See? You got a nice little piece there. It's not shredded. Okay. It's, uh, no, it's Parmesan Reggiano, so it's something... Oh. You know, it's it's usually around nine to uh, twelve dollars a pound. Really? Uh, and it's worth it's, like it's gold. worth kind of uh, uh, guarding. You know, it, in your kitchen at home or in your kitchen at a restaurant to uh, to make sure it's used properly in the, the right dishes. That's another great part about You're going out for dinner. Because, for example, I I wouldn't buy a big chunk of this cheese, but right. I'd go out and I'd eat it and I'd really get to enjoy. It. Right. No, it, well, How's taste that? the difference. Taste more? The difference. Let's or? do more. Yeah, keep going. Oh, okay. You know, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut a little piece off of this too. I do want All to right. taste that difference. Okay. Mm. So I'm going to keep on shaving. All right. Well, Greg, 
We are out of time, but I want to thank you so much for stopping in today. Oh, you're welcome. This looks tremendous. Another great meal. Chandler's Restaurant. It's always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks, Seth. And every Thursday, you can catch Greg Manette and Chandler's Restaurant on Mass Appeal, whipping up a great dish off their menu. And you can get this recipe online by visiting MyMassAppeal.com later today. And if you've never dined at Chandler's Restaurant, you're missing out. You've seen some of the menu items on our show, but head to South Deerfield to check them out for yourself. Be sure to like their Facebook page. Just search for Chandler's Restaurant and check out their page for the latest up-to-date information. Chandler's Restaurant is located at 25 Greenfield Road in South Deerfield. It's a short drive. Just take exit 24 off I-91 North. Call 413-665-1277 to make your reservation.